It is most excellent to see you today. I am John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the 19th of September. It is Tuesday. Now, we're going to do what we always do on this show. We're going to be focusing in on hot OTC and penny stocks, stocks that are under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I determine hot stocks by looking at the charts first. I look for charts that have heat. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go looking for a catalyst through the filings and the press releases. When I find that, then I've got myself a hot penny stock. Now, every day I try to bring you three of these, but you got to keep in mind, I'm not bringing you the best of the best or the cream of the crop. Come on, folks. I'm not AI. There's tens of thousands of stocks out there. I cannot go through them all and weigh them up. I am just bringing you three hot stocks. Hey, it's free DD. You can't complain. So the first one we're going to take a look at is ticker OWUV, One World Universe. Now, this had a high of about 11 cents a year ago. There was a lot of activity around it then. Then the management, two of their head officers, got ill and fell away, and the company just kind of puttered down. Nothing was going on. Well, they are back, and things are back into activity. Well, I saw the chart yesterday, actually. I am kicking myself. I wanted to share this with you yesterday, but I can only share three stocks, and I whittled it down, and this one got whittled out yesterday. Well, this morning I looked at it again and I said, oh, this looks like it's going to break out. And it did. It didn't just break out. It surged. And at the end of the day, it just took off like it was only getting going. So I hope we're not late. So OWUV One World Universe, she finished today at about 1.7 cents and she was up 46% today. She's on the pink tier. She's current, and she's got both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Transfer agent verified and a verified profile. This is validated information. And when you're trading pinks, you don't get any validated information. We have to take management at their word for everything, even the financials. That's why they call them disclosures. So whenever you get these green ticks, you're ahead of the game. So that looks good. So they tell us here that One World Universe is a publicly traded company that invests in sports memorabilia, distressed assets, business opportunities within emerging industries, and providing humanitarian efforts in over 185 countries, has issued a corporate update to its shareholders and potential new investors. And we're actually going to take a look at that. But I want to give you a little more information about the company because there's not a lot out there. I don't have any pictures to share with you because they don't have any pictures, products, or anything like that. There's very little information about what they're doing and who they're doing it with. I'm a little confused here. So, bottom line, we are not looking at this company for a long hold. It is not an investment. It is a play. This is a trade stock. Here they tell us that One World Universe is a California corporation whose mission-driven business is implementing global humanitarian efforts through the profits generated from the sales of products and services to improve people's lives living in the harshest environments and their communities. Our company has contributed valuable resources such as access to personal protective equipment, medications, vaccines, and educational support programs where play and basic necessities are essential. And they mention this over and over again in their news presses that they are helping the world with all of their beneficial activities. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, let's see what we have running over here. Well, that's a nice increase, folks. Come on, going from under 200,000 to over 2.2 million. You are looking at 10, 12, about 11 times her normal volume, 1,100% 1, increase. Share structure for OWUV. Outstanding shares, roughly 200 million. Restricted shares, this is how many the insiders, the management own, they got about half of them, 98 million, which leaves us the other half, roughly 100 million in the float. Not a terrific float, but it's not really all that bad either. Financials for One World. 
right. We don't have anything over here annually or quarterly. So I did dive into the most recent financial and they weren't very good. At the end of their last year, they had done $58,000. At the end of the most current year, they did minus $38,000. So they did take a huge drop. Disclosures for the company. Well, we don't have anything over here to look at since 2010. So let's dive on into that news. Now, this is a little interesting. I'm looking at a few pieces of old news here that tell me we should have been in revenues, but where are they? First, we have a piece of news all the way back in August of last year. The company announced Ameritrust is approved to work with New Res. They were making a deal with a subsidiary of Ameritrust, B&D Supplies, I believe it was. And everything was going fine until some news came out that some employees of Ameritrust had been defrauding a bank. I don't know what the details are, but I do know that that ended the deal. It did not go through. Then they had another deal here in September a year ago. The company is pleased to announce that they have reached a business agreement with an international technology company. Now, this is old news, but I found it very interesting. The company reached an agreement with an international company that creates and licenses trading automation strategies. The company is currently reflecting monthly profits of $5.9 million with a $208 million corporate valuation. The company has six $15 million contracts in place with an additional eight contracts anticipated to be executed by the end of the year. This is 2022. With the acquisition of 51% of this company, we will be able to provide revenues to continue our humanitarian efforts worldwide. Well, are they taking the money first and buying all this humanitarian stuff? <laughs> because it isn't getting on the revenues. Where is all this money? Jumping back to that news, we come all the way up to April now. One World Universe is pleased to announce they have acquired crypto vending machines. These are Bitcoin ATMs, and I think they work with five or six other crypto coins. You want to sell one of your coins, it'll give you cash right there from the ATM. Now, there's something you need to be aware of. I just read about a week ago that a company that claims they have a patent for ATM Bitcoin machines has hired a legal team to go after other companies that have put ATM Bitcoin machines out. So I don't know where that puts this company. Then they tell us that they have put out an app. I did miss this here, but the app is just going from the web to the phone, so it's easier for a lot of people to get consultation, which is really what the business does. They're consultants. They help people to build their businesses. Then we have a piece of news in August of this year. The company is pleased to announce that they are in negotiations with Thrive Wellness to do a joint partnership. This is for a work staff. They have some health facilities and they're getting a whole bunch of work staff to work in those health facilities. Then the most current piece of news came out on the 14th of this month, uh, just five days ago. The founding CEO is back. I am back, people. They say, while the CFO and I have faced our share of medical strife these past few months, we wanted to let our shareholders know that we are back and getting strong enough to start rebuilding our subsidiaries. Now, this is a Karen Courier play. I don't know if you know that name or not, but she's been wonderful for the OTC market. A couple years ago, she was on fire. She was saving companies from the expert market, companies that had been identified to have no management. They were boats without anybody at the helm. She got court appointed to take care of them. She pulled them out of the expert market, cleaned them up at her own expense, made them pink, got them back on the market, and then made deals for them, mergers, and she started making money with them. Another one of her companies is Ilus, I-L-U-S, the firefighting company. Well, she has been at the helm here while they were gone, but it says that she's having uh, health issues with her family, so she's got to step aside now. Now, the most interesting piece of information that comes from this press release, I really don't know what to make note of, but it gives so much room for speculation. And penny stock traders, OTC stock traders, they love to speculate. Don't tell them the ending and they'll make up an ending better than they have. 
Well, they tell us here we have exciting news to announce in the near future as it relates to moving forward to a one world currency. You know, I've been hearing talk about America going to a cryptocurrency and our paper money and change disappearing and we're just going to have crypto tokens, if you will. But I have not heard of the one world currency for a long time. I haven't been to church in a while. <laughs> so I don't know what that is all about. Please stay tuned for the exciting news. Boy, they're fishing and they just hooked us, didn't they? All right, so they've got things going on. Their revenues are not right. Where's all the money for the revenues they should have been getting a year ago? The head honchos are back at the helm. They're steering the ship. They got something going on here. Maybe things are going to change. All I know is that I saw the chart yesterday and it looked prepared to break out. Today she broke out, she surged, and just before I started making this video, she was running even hard. So I don't know where she's at. You wanna go peek at her with me? Come on, let's go. Yes, charting, my favorite part of due diligence. We're gonna be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. I got it when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So we are looking at ticker OWUV, One World Universe. This is a one-year, one-day chart, so we can get our 52-week high and low. Our high came about September of last year at 12 cents, and she hit a low in August of this year of 007. That is a huge fall, folks. Coming on down to that six-month, four-hour view, Five months ago, we had a high of 4.3 cents. She was over the 200 very briefly there, came back under it and fell all the way down to this low. And she really didn't do anything after hitting the low. She just kept going sideways with a bounce here and there, but nothing going on until three days ago, she started to push up after market. Yesterday, she got right up underneath that 200, and today she broke out and surged. She started off yesterday at roughly uh, just under a penny, 0 0.009, and she went all the way up here to 2.1. So call that 9 to 21. So you have a hunt, over 100% gains easy. And where's the pullback? Where's the dip? There isn't none. It's stuck up there. Lots of volume came in for the last few days. And look at those oscillators, folks. You want to see perfection? That's perfect. Look at, the, look at the steepness. They are going up like they literally are being launched to the moon. RSI is up there at 85 right now. Our green bars are getting bigger and bigger. I'm loving the four-hour chart. Check out that 20-day, one-hour view. Nothing going on. She's been skipping across that 200-day haul, which is a lot like your 200-day SMA, except it gives more credence to current prices. And the penny stocks have been, been paying heed to this a lot lately. So she has skipped across this like a rock on water, and then she took off uh, one, two, three, four days ago. She got up over top of that 50. It took her two days to do that, and then she launched. It was two days ago she started pushing for that 200. She was at, as I said, 009 going up to that over two cent mark. Oscillators on the one hour chart are still perfect. Nothing wrong with any of these, and they're getting stronger. Look at the angle turning and getting even steeper. Look at that jump at the end of the day. Coming down to our five day, five minute. Oh my goodness, that's a perfect chart. That is perfection. You've got your low bubble in this corner of double zero eight. You've got your high bubble at the very end of the chart here at 2.1. <laughs> This is a five-minute chart. I told you the very last five minutes of the day, she just got excited and started tearing it up. She was here at 1.6 cents and went up a nickel. She went up a bloody nickel. That was a penny a minute. Boy, wouldn't you like to have your charts do that all day. Volume. Volume today, just today alone. Look how it's been growing. Everything is looking very strong. Oscillators are still pushing up. Still getting strong angles on them. This looks outstanding. RSI is at 80 on the five-minute chart. I know a lot of you think, that's the overbought. You got to get out when it goes red. 
folks. It will come down imminently, but who knows how long it'll stay up there. Hurricanes can hang around for a real long time. So I like high RSI. OWUV. She hasn't really got a lot of information to offer us. No graphics and the revenues stink, but that chart is looking awfully hot. This would be a good play, but it would be a terrible bag to get holding. <laughs> OWUV. Put it on your watch list. It could be fun. Our next hot penny stock is another American cannabis company, but not like most cannabis companies. This is MJ Holdings, ticker MJNE. Now, this is an American cannabis company working out of Nevada, Las Vegas, out of Las Vegas, probably 80, 90, 100 miles outside of Las Vegas, out in the middle of the desert. 260 acres out in the middle of the desert, they are growing and processing marijuana. Where are they getting all their water way the heck out there? Aqua fires. Just like farmers, they're drilling wells and just pulling the water up. But another problem that they had a very creative solution for? Workers. This is a huge facility. How do you get people to drive 90 miles a day out to their job and 90 miles a day back? You're not going to. So they built a community out there. Tiny house community. THC. I guess they have a sense of humor. And it comes with the amenities that you're going to need in a community out there. So they've got a very unique operation. And what they do is they don't actually grow the cannabis. They rent the space to other people who want to grow cannabis. And they just don't charge a lease for the space that you're using. They charge by how much you produce and how much your contracts are that you're selling it for. Very unique business. So MJNE has a hot chart. It is an atypical breakout chart that hasn't broke out yet. Not like the last one. We're in early enough and she is just now setting up. So MJNE finished today at 2.2 cents and she was up a little over 11% today. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we don't have a verified profile. Now, that's not a deal breaker, but we would like to see it. So what does this company do? Well, I already told you what they do, but let me give you a little more information. This comes from their website, mjholdingsinc.com. The company approved for 100 acres of cultivation cannabis farm of the 260 acre farm. We pioneered the model of management licensing agreements to provide a cultivation space in Nevada for multi-state operating brands, white labeled services, and for those looking to enter the Las Vegas market. Our management agreements provide cultivators with numerous growing techniques for cultivating cannabis in Nevada's desert climate, as well as licensing support, production management, and asset and infrastructure development. So what was the relative volume around the company today? You have got to be kidding me, really? What a drop going from roughly 100,000 shares a day down to under 6,000 shares today. And she took 11% gains to boot. Very interesting. Share structure for the company. Not bad. Outstanding share count is about 59 million. The management, they own about half of them, 28 million. And we get the rest, roughly 30 million. Not a bad float. Financials for MJ Holdings. Well, the last two years have been kind of wimpy. 2021, she had $241,000. Don't forget those three zeros up there. We got to add to any of the numbers here. And at the end of 2022, she had $362,000. Now, the main difference between the two years, this cost them $341,000 to make $241,000. They were down $99,000. But what happened last year? 2022, it didn't cost them anything for the money they made. They got to keep every red cent. Looking at their quarterlies, they're everywhere. The last one isn't bad. We're up at $119,000 and it only cost us $3,000 to make that money. So whatever formula they've got, it's working. Disclosures for the company. 
All right, we've got a financial. The most recent one came out August 14th. So if you're interested in the company, that's where you're going to get the best information. All right, now the company has no news, folks. There is absolutely nothing here. All this news is old. Most current piece is December of 2022. The company's first harvest at Armagosa Valley Farm. That's what they were talking about. So what I did was to jump into the most recent financial and get as much information as I could. So let's tag on to that right now. Now, we read that they did revenues of $119,000 in that last quarter. But they didn't do all the math for us. As I was reading this, there was other income they had to add in. Total other, total other income, $1.3 million. Now, when you deduct what you got to deduct, not counting taxes because they don't get any taxes, as you see right here. Provision for income tax, zero. So they get no tax deductions. Total revenues was $909,000 compared to $119,000. Now, they've got information down here about the company, and this pretty much puts everything into perspective for us. For the six months ended June 30th of this year, the majority of the company's revenue was derived from its management agreement with MJ Distributing Inc., with the remainder from rental revenue from its tiny homes community, rental revenue for operating leases. For the six months ended June 30th in 2022, all of the company's revenue was derived from the rental revenues they got from the properties at the tiny home community. Now, this deal they have with MJ, MJ Distributing, they say here that on February 5th, 2021, the company entered into a management agreement for cannabis production and cultivation with MJ Distributing, where they would take over the business. They would run the entire business and they would split the profits 50-50 with the company. And that's how they make their money. Somebody else is running all the cultivation aspects of leasing it to other people and they are renting properties over there at Tiny Home Community. So let's go take a look at that chart and see why I looked at this in the first place. Checking out our cannabis company, MJ Holdings. This is ticker MJNE. We are looking at a one-day, one-year chart. Our 52-week high came in October of 25 cents, and she's had a long, exaggerated fall to the absolute basement floor the lowest price you can get on the OTC market, 0001. She did that at the end of May. Taking a look at our six-month, four-hour view, six months ago, our high was 13.5 cents. Our low hasn't changed. And from that low, she's predominantly just been going sideways. Now, it was about a week ago she got up over top of the 50. That's the first thing you got to do before you break out over the 200. And then you start working towards it as the 200 gets closer. Now, what I would like to see here is a directional intentional spike. I want to see a jump off of this nine-day SMA, go through the 200, and then put a wick these little lines on top of the bars, a wick. I want a long wick over top of this and then for it to come right back down to where it started. That tells me that she is going to break out as soon as she gets an opportunity and she's helping herself to make it happen. When you put a big spike up there, way up high, well, remember, the higher the price goes, the more it tugs on these SMAs. It pulls the SMAs up every time the price goes up. So if it goes way up, even if it just stays there a second and comes down, it has tugged the SMAs. And that brings the 200-day SMA into level and flat zone. And that's when she'll make a breakout and run. So she is setting up. We just haven't had our directional intentional spike yet. Volume is very light. Osculators, they're not bad. Our PPO is climbing slowly and steadily. Our MACD is climbing as well, though it is going through a test right now. And our RSI is pushing up. She's come from 49 up to 53, which is still a little bit cool. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we got a low bubble in this corner, just over a penny. Bouncing off of that low bubble, she put herself over the 200. Got excited about doing that. We had two big bars as she was crossing. Once she actually got on top and stayed, some more big bars. Celebration. 
came down here and we had two big stabs go not only through the 200 SMA, but the 200 hall. Now that may have scared some people, but the way I see these, it's the reverse of a breakout. I like to see those directional intentional spikes. Well, this here, this tells me when it goes through strong SMAs and right back to where it started, it's building support. Think of these as pillars holding up the bridge. It says, I'm going to start climbing. Can you hold the weight? Yeah, let's put down some pillars. And she did. Day later, she took off, got a nice jump, fell down to her nine, and she's been rolling across that 20 day SMA with an occasional tag onto her 50. Oscillators are a bit cool right now. Everything looks nice on the chart. Everything is going up, but the oscillators do show a 10 to pushing down right now. Five day, five minute. Oh, let's shrink that. Well, she's going sideways, dead nuts. She was right here at 2.4 cents. She finished today at 2.2 cents. She is on top of her 50 day SMA and she is right there with the 20 on top of her nine. I don't see a 200 in the picture yet. Our oscillators are a bit cool. They all have a tendency of pushing down right now. Not hard, just a slight one, but I'm liking MJNE. She is making money in a different way than the other companies are, and she's an American company. So when the DEA, if the DEA, approves the rescheduling of marijuana from Schedule 1 down to Schedule 3, this company would get tax deductions. I showed you they aren't getting any right now. Any tax deduction you get builds on your profit margin. So that's going to help them in a very big way. And the chart is set up right now. So you can't turn your back on the possible catalyst that could happen at any moment and the way cannabis stocks have been reacting. They've been getting close to the 200 and taking jumps. So here's a nice one for you. MJNE. Last stock we're taking a look at has got a super hot chart. This is Night Food Holdings, ticker NGTF. Now you've already seen this chart. I gave you a heads up on Sunday. In that video, I gave you a whole bunch of hot charts. Some were in the cannabis sector. That's where NGTF was. Now the truth of the matter is, NGTF is not a cannabis company, not anymore. She never really was dealing with cannabis. She was dealing with cannabinoids, CBDs, she deals with snacks for bedtime, snacks that make you sleepy. So they were putting in a cannabinoid into their ice cream and their snacks. Now there's about a hundred different cannabinoids and each one does something different to us. Well, the CBN, that's the one that makes you sleepy and tired. And that's the one they were putting in their foods. Well, the FDA does not allow CBDs to be put in foods yet. They can be put in supplements, but not foods. So they came out and there is no word about CBDs being in their products anymore. So I don't believe it is in the cannabis sector anymore. Now they got a very interesting business model. They aren't working with supermarkets and stores. They're working with hotels. And as I said, her chart is hot. It is an atypical breakout chart that looked to me like it was going to break out on Sunday. Well, she's breaking out right now. NGTF, she finished today at 3.7 cents with just over 7% gains. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to call this the better tier. It's better than the pinks because here you have to audit your financials. You got to get a CPA in there to do the auditing, not with your pinks. We've also got validated information to go with those numbers, verified profile and a transfer agent verified. So she's looking good. We've also got independent directors. Now, the only reason I know these need to be listed here is when the company has plans to uplist. Now, I haven't read anything anywhere, but there they sit. So you may want to go through the filings and see if they have plans. So what is Night Food about? Well, I did tell you, but let me give you a little more information here. Night Food is pioneering the category of sleep friendly nighttime snacks. Over 80% of Americans snack regularly at night resulting in an estimated 700 million nighttime snack occasions weekly, averaging out to about a billion dollars a week just in snacks after dinner before bed. That is a $52 billion market yearly. 
The most popular choices are ice cream, cookies, chips, and candy. Recent research confirms, as we would expect, that such snacks, in addition to being generally unhealthy, can impair sleep partly due to the excess fat, sugar, and calories consumed before bed that our body has to process. The brand is focused on establishing widespread national distribution of night food ice cream, cookies, and other snack formats in high-margin hotel verticals. (laughs) They're not kidding about high-margin. You go to a hotel and go down to the lobby to buy some ice cream, they're probably going to charge you 10 bucks for it. Where else are you going to go? You've got no other choices, right? So they tell us that with an estimated 56,000 hotels across the United States, expanding distribution into a significant number of those hotels is expected to lead to profitability. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, another drop. More than 50%, but the market has had a lot less volume, folks. It is getting worse and worse all the time. So we have dropped from 127,000 shares down to 42,000 shares, and still we're taking gains. Share structure for NGTF, outstanding share count, about 127 million shares. The management, they own about 38 million of them. That leaves us a float of about 88 million. Not the best float, but not bad. Financials for the company. At the end of 2022, they took a dip down to $443,000, dropping from $701,000. My God, though, look at the cost of revenues here. They're not making any money (laughs) quarterly. They're still not making any money, and their revenues are dropping more and more. And we might see a reason for that when we progress here. Looking at the disclosures, we do have some 8Ks here. And actually, both of these have to do with the most recent news that came out. And the other one goes back a little bit further, and I'm not too sure what that one is. So let's jump on into that news. Now, most of the news here has to do with them expanding into other hotel chains, which is really great. We do have a piece of news all the way back in December of last year where they went head-to-head with Haagen-Dazs, and it turns out more people bought night food ice cream than Haagen-Dazs ice cream. Can you believe that? Also, back in December, they told us that they are producing full-size cookies for hotels and airline amenity opportunities. You know those aren't going to be cheap. Then I told you they expanded into other hotels. Night Food teams up with Sinesta International Hotels. They get vendor status with Choice Hotels. And here recently on September 12th, we had a piece of news that they made a deal with Best Western. The company announced today that its products will soon be available at participating Best Western properties in the United States. BWH Hotel is a leading global hospitality enterprise comprised of three hotel companies, including World Hotels, Best Western Hotels and Resorts, and Sure Stay Hotels. The global enterprise boasts approximately 4,300 hotels in over 100 countries and territories worldwide, with 19 unique brands across every chain scale segment, from economy to luxury. Now, the first thing that went through my head as I was reading this, how many hotels are you in? How many did they put your ice cream into? Well, they don't tell us here. Well, it wasn't a bad question, as I learned. One of those 8Ks we just went by is this. Sean Folkson, the CEO of Night Foods, responded to a shareholder post in an investor chat room relating to the recently announced relationship with Best Western Hotels and wanted to know the number of hotels that may carry night food products as a result. These corporate level relationships are a great step for us, the CEO said, but they don't by themselves guarantee or establish significant amount of distribution. And what he goes on to say is if you're working in stores, they have a system set up for when the product goes low, it's automatically reordered and it's back on the shelves. Hotels aren't that stringent about that. They'll let things run out and it'll be a week before they reorder it. And people have come and gone and never knew they could even buy the ice cream. And until that problem gets fixed and they're trying to 
work with hotels to become more conscientious about serving their customers, not letting there be dry periods in product. So I wasn't the only one thinking that. But to the bottom line, he didn't give us a number here. The guy asked and he just said, we're working on it. We don't know, blah, blah, blah. So they're working with a lot of hotels, but we don't know how many of each. But things are supposed to be growing, though we really don't see it in the revenues. But we see it in the chart. <laughs> Let's go take a look at that. Looking at a one-day, one-year chart for night food holdings, ticker NGTF. So it was back in December, we had a high of 19 cents and she's had nothing but fall all the way down to July where she hit 1.2 cents. Coming down to that six month, four hour view, almost six months ago, we had a high of 13 and a half cents, long drawn out fall down to that low of 1.2. And since July, she's been going sideways, not doing much. Over the last 10 days, she has started to grow, coming out from underneath all her SMAs, getting on top of the 50, and about seven days ago, she started to push up. She was at about 1.7 cents, and it pushed up here to over 4 cents. You're looking at over 100% gains, 130, 140% gains. She started climbing slowly and then turned up the volume. I don't know why. She's gotten very loud here, and she is pushing strong. Our oscillators... They are all strong. Every single one of them is pushing to the moon or on fire. Our RSI is clear up there at 79 right now. And look at our SMAs. Smooth sailing, all of them. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, we got a low way back here of 1.4 cents, under the 200 for about 10 days. Took a couple days to get over that 200, and once she did, she had her mind set on climbing. First ever so slowly and then with a lot of fervor. And she is right on top of that nine-day SMA. Had a big morning this morning. She jumped from 3.3 up to 4.1 just like that and came right back down. Still on top of her nine-day SMA. All of our SMAs look beautifully laid out. Osculator, they are strong. They've had a little bit of cool off, but they've gone back to heating up again. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. Excellent chart, low bubble in this corner, high bubble in that corner. Going from 1.9 cents up to 4.1 cent. She is on top of everything. She is floating on the nine day SMA, never touching any other SMA. She had a drop underneath it, but did not touch the 20. Came right back up, one little sliver and the bars are getting bigger. Our oscillators, they've just planed out. I see no danger, Will Robinson. Everything is level, but no harm done. Night Foods, another company that hasn't got great revenues. They've got a business model they're working on. They've got a hot product, well, a cold product. They also sell potato chips and cookies and snack bars and stuff like that as well. But we haven't seen them take off yet. But the chart is set up and hot charts only need a little catalyst to move. So I'm thinking we're going to see some run out of this. NGTF, it deserves a little more of your due diligence, as do the other two. Never let my due diligence be the end of all. It's your money, folks. Do some due diligence, please. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.